What is going on everybody and welcome to my very first guide for Diablo 4. This Necromancer build is specifically for hardcore, but you can use it for softcore if you want. You just have to make some minor tweaks here and there. Yes, we're going to be using a Bone Spear build. We're going to be chalking it at enemies and they're going to be dying. The build is going to focus mainly on survivability, insane damage. So that way you could do the capstone level 70 dungeon, higher tier nightmare dungeons, and basically anything torment because I am just cruising through that content, man. I guess there's only one more question to ask. Can it beat the butcher? Yeah, trying to do this while like talking like for a video is no fucking way. Oh, let's go. Let's go! You got absolutely shit on! Uh, yeah, it can. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the skill tree. Why I use certain skills? I know we're a bone spear build, so why put anything else on the bar, right? That's probably what you're saying, but we do a little bit more than that, believe it or not. I'm gonna show you why I use certain things. So let's just get straight into the skill tree. I'm gonna try to keep this as quick and painless as possible while going over everything. It's gonna be a tough task, but let's see if I could do it. So the first one we're gonna talk about is Bone Splinters. This is our auto attack. Helps us get Essence back. It shoots out three Bone Splinters. It's not so much the damage, but what it does for us. It gives us Essence. And then if you go over here, 25% chance to fire two additional projectiles. So it could be three, three, and then it'll shoot five. You have two options here. But I went with the top one. It initiates Bone Splinters. Bone Splinters have 20% chance per hit to make enemies vulnerable. For me, this is ideal because we have an aspect that allows us to get more essence regen. This one, it just does critical strike chance. I think that's overkill. We're doing a lot of critical strike chance with this build. So really up to you. But for me, vulnerable is the way to go. So now that's for the basic skills. Let's go to the core skills now. None over here. We're going to get these two passives here because look, this one right here, your maximum essence is increased by nine. You want to get a high max pool of essence because that's just going to help with the damage. You'll see that later on, but having a max pool of essence is always nice. So we have three in that. And then your core skills cost 9% more essence, but deal 15% increased damage. Maybe you don't get this right off the bat in the beginning, like when you're going into Nightmare, but you definitely want this for like later content, especially in Torment. It's just going to make a huge difference. And we have so much sustain that we don't really see it. It doesn't affect us at all. So, Bone Spear. Yes, a Bone Spear build. I know, big surprise. It's the meta right now. This thing hits like a truck. And yes, we're going to use it before it gets nerfed. Even if it gets nerfed, there's still going to be Bone Spear builds in Diablo 4. So it really doesn't matter. Even if it does a little bit less damage, it's still going to be good. Uh, item Contribution 4. We have it at rank 9 because my gauntlets are giving it plus 4. So it's very nice. But check this out. 14k damage. It's so sick. And then Bone Spear, when you shoot it out... It breaks into three shards when it comes back. So we go right here. Bone Spear has 5% increased critical strike chance. You could get this one, but from my experience, we have an aspect that makes enemies go vulnerable when you use Bone Spear. So, so that one's just repetitive. You might as well just go with the increased critical strike here. Now let's talk about Blood Mist. It's at rank three. The cooldown's at 18, kind of high, but you basically become immune for three seconds. It's one of the best skills in the game. You get healing when you attack enemies. And we also have the version when you hit enemies with blood mist, you get fortify. Fortify is a little bit tough to get on this build, but I'll show you a way we get it. But I go with this option just to get a little bit more fortify. Yeah, this skill will save you on hardcore. If you're using Necromancer on hardcore and you don't have blood mist, like why not use it? It'll save you from certain death. You get frozen, your AoE is going everywhere, you just pop it, you don't have a care in the world, you just easily avoid it. One of the best skills in the game. What? What the fuck? Bone Prison. So the great thing about this is I use this to trap enemies, and it helps us get Essence back, and you could also get Fortify, so... When everybody is grouped up together, you pop that bone prison and then you're getting fortified back. So 
with this build, we can get Fortify. So yeah, I go here, Enhance Bone Prison, and then we get the Fortify. So they buff this. It used to be 5%. Now it's at 8%. So it makes it even better to get Fortify now. Uh, curse Skills. Yeah, I get plenty of Essence back when I'm just doing dungeons or doing any content. So I'm not using Iron Maiden to cast on enemies so I can get the Essence back. Maybe some people use this for Amplify, but I don't use Curse Skills. But right here, Death's Embrace. Close enemies take 6% more damage from you and deal 9% less damage to you. So this one is a must. It just makes us more tanky and do more damage. Makes sense. Death's Reach. You deal 12% increased damage to distant enemies. I mean, we're always chucking spears at a distance, so why not get more damage with it? Makes sense. Uh, Corpse and Maccabee skills. We got Corpse Tendrils. So this you use for crowd control. I know you're just chucking spears. I get it. I know that joke never gets old. But trust me, there's going to be situations where enemies are going to spawn on you. You're going to have AoEs all over the place. You might chuck a quick spear, get a corpse, and then buy some time. So when they get pulled in, you can bone prison them, get your fortify, chuck a spear there, and then they just die. Holy shit. Enhance Corp Tendrils, so when they get pulled in, they get slowed, applies the crowd control on them. So if you have anything that's like crowd control damage, that's just going to help increase the damage. And then enemies damaged by corpse tendrils made vulnerable for three seconds. So I have this wombo combo that I do where I'll have like a corpse surrounded by a bunch of enemies. So I use the corpse tendril, it pulls them in, bone prison, they become vulnerable, chuck a bone spear, GG, they're dead. <laughs> that's basically it. All right, so serration, we have that at rank three, your bone skills have a 0.9% increased critical strike chance for each 10 essence you have upon cast. Max pool equals more critical strike chance. And with this build, we get over 200. So we're always critically striking. It's insane. I think they actually nerfed the number. I think it was one point something, but 0.9 is still good. Now let's go to compound fracture. After critically striking 10 times with bone skills, your bone skills deal 15% increased damage for five seconds. That is really good. You want to max that out. Go over here, rapid ossification. Every 100 essence you spend reduces cooldown of your bone skills by 1.5 seconds. Bone prison's gonna get reduced. And then your bone storm, which is our ultimate, we'll talk about that in just a bit. Really nice to have this. And since we're chucking spears, getting a lot of essence back, we go through 100 essence very quickly. So you're just gonna proc that cooldown reduction all the time. Evulsion. This, you don't have to have at rank six. I got a nice roll on my necklace and I have it up to 36%. So if you were to take off three, you guys would get at 18%. So you don't need it at six, but look at this, man. Ooh, that is nice. <laughs> that is very nice. Critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. So all of those you wanna have maxed as much as you can. And let's move on to the ultimate. So no blood wave, no army of the dead. We are using Bone Storm. This one is just meta. You get damage reduction is increased by 15%, but the main reason is the critical strike chance. So remember what I said about the Wombo combo. You pull them in with Corpse Tendril, proc your Bone Storm, you Bone Prison them, and then just shoot a Bone Spear in them and watch them die. Just do that combo and you're gonna watch the enemy melt. Since we don't have minions, you like have to go for these two. These are like meta at this point. So increase damage reduction by 18, reduced by two for each active minion. Since we don't have any, it's just making us tanky. Sacrificing both skeletal warriors and skeletal mages increases their sacrifice bonuses by 60%. So we'll go over the Book of the Dead, which is basically the sacrifices right after this. And now key passive here. Ossified Essence. Your bone skills deal 1% increased damage for each point of essence you have above 50 upon cast. So remember what I said about having a max pool. The more max essence you have, the more damage we're going to do essentially. So just keep that in mind when you're finding like pieces of gear and stuff. But now let's go over the Book of the Dead. I'm going to show you all the sacrifices and why I chose certain ones. So on the Skeletal Warriors, I went with the 19% non-physical resistance. Some of you might want to go for critical strike chance, but again, we're always critical striking. So this one will just be pointless. Like there's no point in going for this. We always critically strike. So being tanky just makes sense. You deal 19% increased shadow damage. Yeah, I don't deal with the shadow stuff. So for me, this one is like the only good one to go with. 
All right, now Skeletal Mages. We are on the Shadow one, and your maximum essence is increased by 19. We also have an Aspect that increases our Sacrificial bonus. So, for me, Max Essence is a no-brainer. Like, you want to go with this because that's just going to increase your damage. Although this one gives you 19% increased damage to Vulnerable, this one is actually increasing our Essence and our damage at the same time. So we get a 2 for 1 with this one. So, that one, I think, beats this one, hands down. And then overpower. We don't overpower with this build, dude. Get that trash out of here. <laughs> okay, Golem. Sacrifice. Let's check it out. You actually have a lot of options here. Gain 13 increase attack speed. Maximum life. But we're going with the deal 38% increased critical strike. Damage. Because with this build, we have a lot of increased critical chance. And I stack a lot of critical strike damage, so... You go with this, you chuck a bone spear in the crowd, and you're just gonna see the numbers, man. The numbers go hard on this build. <laughs> and that is it for Book of the Dead. With this build, you're gonna have around 7,436 attack power, 6,463 armor, and then 8,155 life. So depending on what level you're at, you know, those numbers are gonna be higher or lower. A lot of it is still low level. I haven't found a lot of pieces for my current level. That's how it's gonna be when you level up. Once you get into Torment, it's gonna be harder to get upgrades. So just because I'm level 86 doesn't mean you can't get it when you're around like 65 level 70. So just keep that in mind a lot of it is just going to depend on your luck and getting like unique drops or just specific rolls on certain gear now let's go over the stats we're going to go over this real quick and then we'll get more in depth when we talk about the gear so so weapon speed is at 1.2 and that's because we're using a one hand and an off hand rather than a two-hander we'll talk about why in just a sec attack speed 12.6 percent critical strike chance is at 46.5 i've been doing this testing with like having more lucky hit versus more critical strike chance. I think it could really go either way. But from my experience, having high critical strike chance is nice. And then look at this. Critical strike damage, 302. Critical strike damage with core, 97. Critical strike damage with bone, 186. So we're stacking a lot of critical strike damage, as you can see. All damage, vulnerable. You can see the numbers there. Damage with bone, 55. Yeah, so here's lucky hit life life on kill there's all our resistances right there all damage reduction damage reduction while fortified maximum essence 187 pretty nice and with one of the nodes we have in the paragon tree that's gonna boost that to uh 200 plus so pretty nice essence cost reduction 33 percent essence generation three essence generation 16.1 percent and then essence on kill four Movement speed 142. We're not that crazy speed like a rogue, but this paired with an aspect we have, we get around like 150 plus. We still move pretty fast. Cooldown reduction is at 16. And then lucky hit chance. I've been messing around with this. I'm still trying to figure out if having more lucky hit chance around 30 plus is better for the build. But from my testing, whether it's at 30 or 23, I'm still getting roughly around the same essence back. It may be different for other people, but I think if you're critting, you're getting your essence back. Having lucky hit chance around, you know, 23% to like 35% is okay. It's just going to depend on your gear rolls. And then damage reduction, armor contribution, and that's it for the stats. Let's talk about the gear, finally, with the helmet. Deathless Visage gives you total armor, physical damage, critical strike damage with bone skills, and then maximum essence. All those are pretty good for a helm, and this one is essential for the build. Since this is a unique helm, the aspect on it only applies to this helmet, so you can't get it on any other piece. Bone Spear leaves behind echoes as it travels that explode, dealing 1014. Uh, I got a little bit of the high end of the tooltip, but look, I got this at level 60, so just keep in mind that you could get this as early as like low 60s. You may not even get it all the way until you get to 70. It just depends on your luck. And of course, you throw a ruby on there for the maximum life. If you don't have Deathless Visage, here's an option you can go with. This helm has all stats, total armor, maximum life. Cooldown reduction isn't bad, but again, essence reduction, better choice. Aspect of the Protector. This one you can put on the helm. It gives you a barrier when fighting elites, but it's bugged. You could really get it anytime, like picking up a blood orb or I think attacking the environment. It's definitely bugged, but it's pretty nice. You get a barrier for 10 seconds, pretty good. Or you could go with Aspect of Disobedience. 
which when you deal any form of damage, you get an increase to your armor. So again, hardcore, we need survivability. Those are two options you can go with. Now let's go over the chest piece. Damage reduction while fortified, uh, damage, strength, and then see right there how I have damage reduction. And look at the aspect I have. It's the one that gives you the immune bubble. This one is pretty much meta for hardcore. Once your health gets to under 80%, the immune bubble procs, and then you could just stand in there and be completely immune to damage. You could definitely use this to kill the butcher. I've done it in the past. It's such a good aspect. Anything that helps you with survivability, I would put here. But look, you want to get it at five seconds. A lot of people throw this aspect on the necklace. But trust me, there's a reason why I don't have it on the necklace. And we'll go over that. And of course, throw rubies in all of the slots in your armor for max life. Now let's talk about the gauntlets. For me, attack speed and then getting the rank 4 bone spear is a must on this one. Critical strike chance, lucky hit chance... Those could be like flex spots. I think having the critical strike chance is nice because if you're always critting, you're always going to be getting your essence back. And then look at the aspect. This one, I think, is the best choice for the gauntlets. Sacrifice bonuses are increased by 25%. This one you can obtain doing the Ruins of Eridu and Hawazar. So make sure you complete as many dungeons as you can on the map. So that way you have all the codex available to you. So right there, it's called the Sacrificial Aspect. You could just get any armor piece and just throw that bad boy on there. You could get that very early on in your build. So I suggest you complete that. Now let's talk about the pants. Temerity. This isn't vital for the build, but I would say it's pretty good. The main reason is because you're always getting barrier with this build. The only other way to get barrier with this build is to put an aspect. So that's what makes it so important. Look at this. All stats, 24. 39% potion drop rate, lucky hit up to 5% chance to heal. Depending on your lucky hit, you know, you're going to be proccing that more often. But for me, at 23%, it seems to be just fine. 21% healing received. Very nice. Effects that heal you beyond 100% life grant, you bury up to 52%. I got the low end on that, unfortunately, of your maximum life that lasts for 8 seconds. I like it because in combat, you always have a barrier. So you have like that extra cushion. So that's why Temerity is essential for the build, but it's not needed. I'm going to show you an option you can go with. I have these pants here. Look for things that give you like damage reduction, strength, total armor, max life. This one gives me reduction with fortified, but if you could just find the one with damage reduction, that would be great. You could also find one that has damage. So you definitely want to look for those. For the aspect, you want to put anything that gives you survivability. Again, the armor one, anything with reduction. I have the barrier one because it's very similar to Temerity. So as soon as I found Temerity, it was just an easy swap. It didn't like mess with my build. So that's why I put the barrier one there. Now let's talk about the boots. So three max evade charges. That's pretty nice. Usually when I look for boots, I try to get the max evade charges so you could do more dashes, more dodges. It's just going to help you survive in hardcore. The main things you want to look for with boots is movement speed and then some type of like essence cost reduction or regeneration it depends on your luck really but for me look i got fire resistance that's okay strength gives me armor so that's always a plus now the aspect for the boots i went with the critical strikes grant movement speed for one second up to six seconds i got it at 15 percent i feel like for the boots there's only two choices you could either go with this one or you could go with Eluding Aspect. Becoming injured while crowd control grants you unstoppable for 4 seconds. This effect has a 40 second cooldown. This one can save you. And since we have Blood Mist around an 18 second cooldown, say you're in a tough spot, AoEs go everywhere, and then you get frozen, and you already use Blood Mist, right? When your health drops to the injured state, which is 35%, it's gonna give you unstoppable and you'll break free. And then you could use an escape scroll. So for me, this one is probably the one I should have, just so I don't die. But I want the movement speed. So it just depends on you as a player. I would personally go with the other choice because, like I said, it could save you. I think it saved me at one point when I was using it. Now let's talk about the weapons. I went with a one-hand and an off-hand instead of a two-hander. The reason is we attack faster. 
It also gives you a lot more versatility, like putting two different aspects on each one, which you can't do with a two-hander. Once you switch to this setup, you're going to have more resource management, and you're going to be doing just as much damage overall. Let's go into why I chose the wand, because it gives me lucky hit chance, look, 15%, and then 34 vulnerable damage, 81 intelligence, 31 critical strike damage, 22% critical strike damage with bone skills, and then the aspect I am using is the one for corpse tendrils. With my playstyle, I like this one because I know when I'm in those rooms, when they pop in, I grasp them with the, the tendril. And then when I shoot them, look, I'm going to be doing 57% critical strike damage. And that's why I'm hitting over a mil with this build is because of this one. Obviously, if you're just plowing through a dungeon and you're not really using the corpse tendril as much, then you want to go for another option. Maybe the edge master's aspect. Skills deal up to 10% increased damage based on available primary resource when cast. So the higher you keep your resource up, the more damage you're going to do with this aspect. You could get it up to 20%, but here is a crazy flex spot. I know a lot of streamers use Edge Master's aspect. So check this out. Instead of getting maybe 20% on having our essence up all the time, because it's not going to always be up all the time. You could go with this one. 25% damage while you have barrier. And since Temerity gives us barrier, we're going to have that 25% all the time when we're in combat. So for me, I would actually go with this one instead of the primary resource one. If I wanted to go for more raw damage, I would go with this one instead of the Edge Master's Aspect. Now let's talk about my offhand. I have a focus here. It's got the very fast weapon attack. Having a cooldown reduction as an offhand is very nice. So life on kill, pretty good. I hardly go through any potions with the life on kill, so it may seem like a dead stat, but I actually prefer life on kill. Having intelligence is nice because it helps with our skill damage, so that's gonna help with bone spear. Essence cost reduction, you want that on your offhand, very nice. And then look, critical strike chance. I could get that a little bit higher with the roll, but you can get that around 7.5%, very nice. The aspect I am using is Ossified Essence Key Passive also increases the critical strike damage of your bone skills by 1% per essence above 50, up to 36%. That's pretty much the benefit of having two weapons is you could put two offensive aspects on them, just increase your damage. I know two-handers seem kind of juicy with the tooltips and how high they can go, but really, you're going to be doing just as much damage and you'll attack faster. There's so much versatility using a one hand and then an off hand. Now let's talk about the necklace. The jewelry might take you a while to upgrade. I haven't found a better upgrade for this one, but check it out. I always look for movement speed and then essence cost reduction. I got the cooldown reduction and then look, three ranks of evulsion passive. That one, you could pretty much get whatever as long as it increases your damage. It doesn't need to be perfect to my build, but having three evulsion is very nice. Increases our critical damage. And then the aspect I rolled with was Bone Sphere's primary attack makes enemies hit beyond the first vulnerable for 3.8 seconds. Bone shards from Bone Sphere deal 163% damage. I got down the max roll. A lot of people might have put this on another spot, but for me, I put this on the amulet because it increases the power by 50%. That is why out of all of the aspects, I put this one on the necklace because I it just had the highest tooltip and then we do Bone Spear as our main attack of this build. It made sense to make that the highest damage, right? So that's why I put on the amulet and it has been working very well for me. I easily hit over a million with this build. So that is why I have that there. It's called the splintering aspect. All you gotta do is complete goal realm slums and dry steps, and then you could just easily get this. Now let's talk about the ring. Shadow resistance, poison resistance, those are really just gonna be whatever when you get them. But look, resource generation. I think I would want resource generation or resource reduction, whichever one you can find. Critical strike damage with bone skills, critical strike chance, and then I got this one with lucky hit just to increase it a little bit more. The aspect I am going with with critical strikes with bone skills increase your essence generation by 30%. Both of my rings actually have resource generation. Since we do a little bit of that, I didn't want to just mainly get reduction. I wanted to put a little bit of generation as well. Have like a little balance there. Seems to be working for my build. I've had no like complaints with it. If I do run low on essence, all I do is some 
bone splinter attacks and then I easily get my essence back. This aspect right here, the one that gives you essence generation, you could easily get it by completing the Black Asylum. That is right next to the beginning area. Next ring. Lightning resistance, poison resistance. So we actually got like a good spread of the resistances there. Critical strike chance, critical strike damage, critical strike damage with bone skills. Yeah, so things with critical strike damage or chance you want to get on the rings if you can. With this ring, I got maximum life instead of lucky hit chance, which is fine. And then look at the aspect. Lucky hit up to 10% chance to generate 40 essence when hitting a vulnerable enemy with your bone skills so you know you chuck that bone spear when it comes back it's gonna hit all of the vulnerable enemies and you're gonna be generating a lot of essence with this setup i have no issues in combat with this build with essence if it's just one like small enemy obviously you're not gonna get as much essence back but if you're doing like a dungeon like blinding burrows man you're gonna have your essence capped like all the time this aspect right here, you need to find. You can't just use the codex. What? I wasn't even AFK, dude. Bro, I'm making a video here. It's pretty essential for the build, man. So you generate a lot of essence when you have this on. And I just recommend you get it. But if not, maybe just get something that does damage in the meantime. Now that I've gone over all the stats and all the gear, let's hop on to Paragon. Before we go into this, I just want to tell you that as you get higher Paragon, you're always going to be rearranging this stuff. When you start out, it's going to look completely different to when you get to around like, you know, mid 70 up to 80. I was interchanging things so much, but I'm going to just tell you the route I took. We'll also go over the glyphs once I get to a socket area, but I'll also tell you which glyphs I think are the best. You start at the beginning. Doesn't really matter which way you could take. I mean, I would probably go Intelligence just for more damage. And then 5% damage, we get the Prime Node. 20% damage, and then we get Max Life. And then you get everything around it. Maximum Life. Depending on your level, though, maybe you don't even get these side nodes here. But you definitely want to just go up here and then unlock your first Glyph. I had Essence here at first. I'm going to show you what Essence does. For every 5 dexterity purchased within range, core skills deal 9.9% increased critical strike damage. I obviously increased that. Additional bonus, critical strikes deal 22% increased damage to enemies that are not healthy. That one's kind of whatever, but mainly you want this for the core skill, which is going to help with your bone spear. I would put that one there first, but once you start getting to a higher level, you're going to realize that this one right here, Sacrificial, grants you 138% bonus to all magical nodes. So what does that mean? It's going to like boost all of these. So look, armor, that one should be 50. See all of these, 50. See damage on this side? When you put that one here, it's going to boost all of those. So just making me more stronger, you know, survivability and damage. And we get 10% damage when we have no minions, which is what our build is, so... I like Sacrificial Glyph, very nice, but when you're starting out, you probably want to put Essence there first, just to keep in mind. Really depends on what you want to do, but for me, I put Essence there first, just for the damage. But there's nothing wrong with going with Sacrificial first. It's only going to really benefit you once you get it to that plus 15, so that way it expands and it reaches more nodes. Once you get that first Glyph Socket, you want to go on this side and get the 200 armor for more survivability really depends i mean you could go for more damage if you want but i went this way and then i went up also if you want to see the exact setup of my paragon tree i'll show you the setup at the end of this but for now i'm just telling you the route i took before i got to where i am right now so yeah we went this way the first board is going to be the bone graft one the one that increases all of the bone skills so when you go over here you're gonna want to get into reinvigorate this one is meta and very best for the build. It's like best in slot. The reason is maximum essence, essence on kill. And look at all these nodes here. Maximum essence, essence on kill, maximum essence, maximum essence, essence on kill. This one, you need to go to this one first because otherwise you're gonna chuck bone spear and you're gonna run out of resources in the beginning. So this is gonna help with that. Then you'll slowly start seeing the build work like intended. It's because of this node right here. Once you get that, 
Make your way to this one. Hitting enemies with bone skills increases your damage by 1% and your maximum essence by 3 for 8 seconds. Stacks up to 8% increased damage and 24 maximum essence. This one is just going to help with damage overall. It also increases our maximum essence to go over 200 in combat. You just want to grab all of these nodes because all of these either do like bone skill damage, bone critical damage, or just like bone critical chance. So look at this. 4% critical strike chance with bone skills. And just grab anything that gives the critical strike damage surrounding it. So you've got to get this potion one here so you can get over here. And then see over here as well. Very nice node. To go into right in the beginning. And then we're going to go up here. Calcified. 30% critical strike damage with bone skills. So all of these nodes are pretty good. Necromancers don't have a lot of variation with their boards. So this one you want to invest in heavily. You also get another 15% critical strike damage with bone skills if requirements are met. And then you want to just grab all of these. Just increasing our damage overall. So, I went here first so I could get this glyph over here. But now with my levels, I made it in a way where I went this way to get the maximum life and armor. And then I went up here. But yeah, this one over here, Shaper of Bone. 20% bone skill damage. This board is just so good for bone sphere, man. It is like the only one that helps with bone skill damage, so you need it. And then this glyph right here, I have the essence one. You could do swapping with uh, socketed glyphs, depending on where they're at. I put essence here. It just made more sense. And then, yeah, I'm getting the critical strike damage with core. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to get the scent of death. I know some people want to get the elite damage, but for me, I'd rather just get straight up damage, you know? With at least two corpses nearby, you gain 50% damage reduction. With no corpses nearby, you deal 50% increased damage. So you could either become tanky or be more stronger. In combat, we get around 10k plus attack power, and this is part of it. This is buffing our damage. It's very nice. But right in the beginning of this board, you want to go over here, 50% damage to healthy enemies. So... Those initial bone spear shots are just going to do massive damage. You also get critical strike damage. Grab all of these around. That's a pretty nutty node called the Ruin. Yeah, that's a lot of damage like on the first initial hit. But so now you grab the Scent of Death. And what you want to do is this one is shadow resistance. That's kind of whatever. I'll get that when I have more Paragon. But for now, I'm going over here. And I'm getting the corrective rare node for more critical strike damage. That's going to be huge. It's really going to push you to get to that 1 million mark. It's very nice. So now we're going to go up here. Another glyph socket. So this was another option, the exploit one. It gives you damage to vulnerable enemies. I have it at 17%. I'm just, I'm trying to level this one. It's not maxed. Yeah, see, it's only at level 15. So I could be doing more damage with it. I haven't focused on maximizing all my glyphs, which I should, and you should too. You should probably focus on that, but I was doing other things. I kind of got sidetracked. It's whatever. Death marked. This one is not needed, but you know, when those enemies start to get low health, just when they're under 35%, you chuck a bone spear, they're probably going to die instantly. So that's just going to help with that. But you'd probably want to go with preservation first before you go over here, because look at this 200 armor. 10 intelligence and then you get vulnerable damage because we have the max range on this uh glyph right here and then uh yeah you just get armor so yeah you you help out your glyph getting these two and then you get the armor here that is pretty much it the next board if you're interested i'm gonna try to get the one that has the elite damage that one is just strictly for elites I'd rather go for something that does damage to all enemies, you know? To me, that just made more sense. You could do what you want and maybe go with that board instead. I know a lot of people go to that board right away, but unless you're fighting like Uber Lilith and uh, hardcore like level 100, then I would just go for the straight up damage rather than doing like specific like, oh, only elites. Because there are some mobs that are tanky and if they're not elite, then you're going to not be able to kill them as fast, you know? I'm just going to show you how mine looks. So if you're around my level, you can get exactly. 
So that's how that looks right there. That's how that looks at the start here. And then we go up here. I'm going to pause it right there. Okay, and now we're at the next section. Uh, we're at the next section. Yeah. A lot of information, but I hope you enjoyed it. And as you can see with my build, I'm hitting over 1 million. I know a Bone Spear build isn't rocket science, but there are some things that you could do to help with the build and just make it more successful overall, so. Oh, that was a nice hit. Ooh, that hurts. Jesus, can you stop? Okay, yeah, nope, get away from there. Look at this, we're just cruising though. Ooh, got shredded right there. With suppressor, guys, you gotta get a corpse. And then you gotta do the tendril, so you bring them in, and they're stun locked, right? And then that's how you get the easy kill. I don't know, I love using the bone prison as part of my playstyle. Some people may think it's like, kind of pointless, but... I mean, you get the fortify. Ooh, we gain away. That blood blister was about to go. And this is pretty much it. GG. Let's gather them all in. Oh, I got a unique ring. Dude, look at all these freaking raves. Alright, damn. Look at the XP you get. 94? That is nice. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. I'm going to do more Necromancer builds in the future because right now that's my main class. So until then, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.